more of Jesus means less mistakes in our lives. When there's more and more of the Spirit, when there's more and more of the Father in our lives, definitely there's going to be less and less mistakes. Mistakes can cause so much discomfort, pain, and loss. Kaya napakahalaga po sa mga Kristiyano na umiwas sa mga kamalian. Ang ating pong pag-aaral ngayon, sabi nga nila, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. Avoid mistakes. We've got to avoid mistakes. Heavenly Father, we continue to pray. We continue to ask you, Lord, to infill us, empower us to understand, Lord, the mystery of your word, and give us the wisdom to apply such knowledge that you will give us now. Humihiling kami, Panginoon, ng simpleng mensahe, mensahe magpapaalala sa amin kung sino kayo, sino kami, at kung anong dapat na gawin namin sa amin pang araw-araw na buhay. Dumalapit kami sa inyo, Panginoon, na maaaring may mga iba't ibang pwedeng maging hadlang para pagpalain nyo kami. Kaya ang mga hadlang na ito ay sinusuko po namin sa inyo. Be it attitude, be it sorrow or pain, be it discomfort, kung ano man, Panginoon, ang maaaring maging hadlang para lubos namin kayong marinig at lubos na dumaloy ang pagpapala nyo sa aming buhay, inilalapit namin sa inyo at isinusuko. At kami na pasasakop ng lubos sa inyo, Lord. We ask you to take over this place. We enthrone you, O God. Be the king of our hearts, and in the name of Jesus, we reject, rebuke, and drive away any presence of evil. Evil men and evil spirits, we do not forbid. We forbid to hinder the work of the Spirit. Lord, we place ourselves under your protection. You are our God, you are our teacher, you are our Father. May you speak powerfully. Gamitin niyo po ang inyong lingkod na tungtungan ng inyong paa. Maitaas po namin kayo at ang inyong karunungan maging amin. Lord, do your will, teach us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Avoid mistakes. Atin pong nakikita na napakaraming mga pagkakamali ang maaaring maganap pagka tayo ay hindi nakikinig ng lubos sa Panginoon. Sa history po, sa Bible, sa ating buhay, there is a very long parade of mistaken people. A very, very long parade of mistaken people. Kaya dapat na tayong matuto sa parada na ito. Unang-una na si Adam and Eve. Ano po ang kanilang unang mistake? Eating the forbidden fruit. Si Cain, killing Abel. Si Lot, living in Sodom, compromising with sinners. Si Rebecca, ano po ang kanyang mistake? Playing favorites. Si Moses, disobeying God. Hindi niya po sinoobey ang God at siya po ay minsan ay hinampas niya ang bato. Kaya naman, ang sabi ng Panginoon, kausapin lang niya yung bato at lalabas ang tubig. Hinampas niya po ang bato at lumabas yung tubig. Pero ang Panginoon ay inalala yung hindi pagsunod na yon ni Moses. Gehazi, misrepresenting the prophet Elisha and deceiving his master. At ganun din naman po si Saul. Saul, ang kanya pong mistake was being jealous sa sarili niyang warrior and sa... Uh, General na si David, siya po ay nanibugho. Judas Iscariot, anong kanyang mistake? Betraying Jesus. Ananias and Sapphira, they stole. Their mistake was stealing from God, from the church, and lying to Peter, lying to God's apostle. Yan po ang mga parada ng maraming mga pagkakamali, even our relatives, our friends, and ourselves. Kasali din tayo sa parada na yan. The heart of the matter is how to avoid joining the long parade or how to avoid mistakes. Siguro po marami tayong mga kalagayan ngayon na malungkot, painful, sorrowful because of a mistake. Mistake natin, mistake ng mahal natin sa buhay, mistake ng mga may authority and influence over us. How do we avoid mistakes? First of all, know what is right. Know who is right. And of course, know what is right, and that is definitely God's Word. Kailangan kilala natin ang Panginoon. Kailangan kilala natin ang Kanyang salita at alam natin ang Kanyang turo. Matthew 22 verse 29, Jesus replied, You are in error because you do not know the Scriptures or the power of God. Pagka hindi natin alam ang salita ng Diyos, ang tendency, magkaroon tayo ng mga pagkakamali. Ang tendency ay gumawa tayo ng kabaligtaran ng itinuturo ng salita ng Diyos. Kaya ang sabi itong uh, sumulat ng Psalm 119 verse 11, 
I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. So dalawa yung kanyang naiwasan sa pagtatago ng salita ng Diyos sa kanyang puso, ibig sabihin ay sinasa ulo niya, ina-apply niya sa kanyang buhay, hindi lang sa hindi siya nagkakamali, hindi pa siya nagkakasala sa ating Panginoon. And it's important to know what is wrong. Learn from wrongdoing. Learn from those who commit mistakes. Hindi natin learn by wrongdoing, but we should learn from the wrongdoing of many people and even our own wrongdoing. Mahirap po kasi yung hindi clear kung ano ang tama at mali. At sa atin ngayon, maraming mga bagay na dating clear na clear na mali, hindi naging clear ngayon. Yung dati na tinatawag na sinful lifestyle, tinatawag na kumisan ngayong alternative lifestyle. Yung mga dating very very wrong ngayon eh, to each his own ang policy ng mga tao. Ang ina ay human rights, mga kung ano-ano, kaya hindi na nagiging malino ngayon kung anong right and wrong. All the more that the people of God must know and speak of what is true. God does not change. If one million people said that a wrong thing is now right to do, it's still wrong if God said so. Kung wrong yon. Kaya sino po yung blessed na person? Yung makakaiwas sa maraming mga mistakes. Psalm 1.1, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. Pagka umiiwas tayo sa mga makakasalanan at hindi tayo na-influensya ng kanyang buhay, there is blessedness. How to avoid the long parade? How to avoid mistakes? Think of what is right. You not only know what is right, but you think of what is right, and you think right. Always think of what is right. Philippians 4.8, Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Siyempre, yung mga verses na binabasa natin, may mga original context at may original audience yan at may original intention yung nagsulat. Pero hindi natin uh, maaaring i-confine lang yung doot kasi meron siyang mga universal truths that can be applied today. That's why the Word of God is powerful. And we are appealing to and we are trying to look into the universal values of these verses. How they may be applied to our lives today. So kung ano yung totoo, kung ano yung mabuti, kung ano yung maganda, yun ang dapat iniisip. At nang hindi napupuno ang ating isip ng mga pangit at mga mali at mga hindi dapat. Kaya pinsan na ng pinag-uusapan natin na yan is to dwell on what is right. Immerse yourself on what is right and in what is right by letting the word of Christ dwell in you. Merong rule yan ng osmosis eh. Yung daw liquid of higher concentration move to areas of lower concentration. So yung high concentration of the word of God, kung lagi tayong nag immerse doon, magkakaroon ng osmosis. Lilipat yun sa atin. Kaya nga yung maalat na tubig, hulugan mo ng karne, aalat yung karne, lumipat sa kanya. From a place of high concentration to a place of low concentration. So kung low ang concentration ng word of God sa atin, kailangan magkaroon ng osmosis. We immerse ourselves in God's word. We immerse ourselves in God's righteousness. Then it becomes our second nature. Colossians 3.16, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Hindi lang basta dwell in you, kundi dwell in you richly. Kailangan ay mayaman, punong-puno, maraming blessing. How to avoid the long parade of mistaken people? Do what is right. So you know what is right, you think of what is right, immerse yourself in what is right, and do what is right. Marami naman pong tao nagkakamali hindi dahil hindi niya alam na mali yon. Talagang alam niyang mali, ipinagpipilitan pa rin na gawin ang mali. Konting-konti lang po siguro yung tao na magkakamali tapos pag itinuwid mo, sasabihin, ay, mali pala ako, sorry, hindi ko alam. Konti lang yon. Kasali pa doon yung mga nagmamaang-maakan. Madalas alam na natin. Kaya go back to the basics. Do what is right. Romans 12.17 do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. Siyempre, everybody kasama ang Diyos. So be careful to do what is right before God and before men. And do what is right always. 
Hindi lang yung do what is right when you're at, in church, pagka Sunday, pagka may retreat. Do what is right always. Then we avoid mistakes. If you always do what is right, maybe the best things will not always happen, but definitely the worst won't. Kaya lagi dapat ang ginagawa ko, ano yung tama? And then stay on and keep to what is right. Keep to what is right. Kung minsan yung iba, hirap na hirap, nag-agonize, magde-decide right or wrong. Dapat hindi na tayo nagkahihirapan. Yung right ang gawin, maging automatic, maging second nature to us. And then matapos mahirapan mag-decide to do what is right, to be in the right place, sandali-sandali lang, aalis na sa right position, pupunta sa wrong position. That's why we have to keep to what is right. Proverbs 2.20 Thus you will walk in the ways of good men and keep to the paths of the righteous. Keep to the paths of the righteous. Kung nakikita po natin halimbawa yung landas ng righteous, yung landas ng hindi righteous, dapat doon na lang tayo lagi. Wala naman po akong bagong sinasabi sa inyo. Alam nyo to eh. Alam natin itong lahat. Kaya lang ginagawa ba natin to do what is right and to keep to what is right? Kaya yung wisdom, ang sabi niya sa Proverbs 23:26, My son, give me your heart and let your eyes keep to my ways. Gumagawa na tayo ng tama, huwag na natin kakalimutan at tatalikuran yung tama, stay there. Bakit ba umaalis kumisan yung mga tao sa tamang path? Kasi parang mas attractive yung wrong path. Parang mas maraming promises, mas maraming comfort, mas maraming fruits. But it's a lie. Parang yun ang sinabi na, Masarap kasama si Satan kasi ibe-bless ka niya. He has no capacity to bless because Satan, as referred to by the Lord, is a thief. And the Lord says the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Wala tayong mabuting mapapala sa paglakad sa mga landas na mali. Kahit merong initial na parang fruit na maganda. Para rin yung mga nawa 1, 2, 3, na mga kung ano mga scam, Siyempre, sa unang pagsali mo, may tubo ka agad, makakatikim ka ng kita, merong benefit para ka mawili. At pag willing-willing ka na, pati kaluluwa mo, i-invest mo na, ilalagay mo na lahat. Pati gintong ngipin ng lola mo, ilalagay mo na doon. Doon ngayon, lalabas yung pagkaka-1, 2, 3. Alam mo yung 1, 2, 3, run. 1, 2, 3, takbo, tinakbuhan ka na. Siyempre, may benefit sa umpisa. Meron agad yan na attractiveness. Kaya nga dapat maingat tayo pag yung benefit na papalagay sa una. Pagka ang trato agad sa iyo, ang ganda-ganda, wala pa kayong pinagsamahan, bigay na nang bigay sa iyo ng mangga, ng langka. Sige, bakit? Parang sinabi na ni Balagtas, pag ang isinalubong sa iyong pagdating ay maamong mukhat may pakitang giliw. Ano daw ang kasunod nun? Ihanda ang iyong gagamitin pagkat yay kaaway na lihim. Pag sobrang friendly, No? Yung mga kumari nyo, kung sobrang friendly, naku, magduda-duda kayo. Baka nagkikita sila ni Mister. Aba, yung mga kumari, sobrang mahilig magregalo sa kanilang kumari, mag-isip-isip kayo. Baka may guilt complex kaya regalo ng regalo. No? Gustong anakin lahat ng inyong anak, puntahan kayo lagi, ipagkudkud kayo ng nyog, igawa kayo ng palitaw. Laging nasa bahay nyo, mag-isip-isip kayo din. Sabi ni Balagtas, pag ang isinalubong sa iyong pagdating ay maamong mukhat may pakitang giliw. Ay, dapat huwag mong ilapat ang loob mo agad. So, ganun din po yung mga deception ni Satan. Laging may benefit, may friendliness, merong mga kung ano-ano mga niceness. Pero, isipin mo, ito ba talaga yun? Kaya attractive yung wrong way eh. Merong instant benefit. Yun ay enjoy now, pay later. But many honest endeavors, work hard now, have difficulty now, yung premyo sa may dulo. At maraming tao na iinip, ayaw nila nun. Ang gusto nila yung enjoy now. Never mind, let the devil take tomorrow. But tonight, I need a friend. May makasama lang sa pangungulila kahit pumunta na sa impyerno bukas, di bale. Kaya dapat maingat. It is important to stick to what is right, to keep to what is right, no matter what. Hindi tayo nag stick to what is right only when it is convenient, only when people are watching, or only when it is beneficial. Remember this, church. Listen well. It is always beneficial to be right. It may not always be apparent, it may not always be instantly visible, but it is always beneficial to be on God's side. Never take the side of the devil for an instant gratification. Dahil mahal ang bayad. Do not go to what is wrong. 
Proverbs 4, 14 to 15. Do not set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn from it and go on your way. Huwag na huwag. Papunta yan sa kapahamakan. And then how else do we avoid mistakes? Teach, share, spread what is right. It is important to teach what is right. May alam tayong tama, ituro natin sa ating mga anak. May alam tayong tama, ituro natin sa ating asawa, sa ating mga kapatid, sa ating mga kaibigan, ating kapitbahay. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, and trust to reliable men who will also be qualified to teach others. Here, Paul teaches Timothy. And Paul says to Timothy, What I taught you, you teach to reliable people who can teach others also. Four generations of teachers and learners. Para yung truth dumami, magmultiply, at mas maraming tao na, 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 nabubuhay sa katotohanan. Why? Because teaching reinforces, spreads, and strengthens what is right. Truth will always be truth. Truth will always be strong. But of course, truth is all the, ma all the more made stronger by multiplication. Dumadami yung nakakaalam, dumadami yung naniniwala. Yun ang nagiging norm. So that when you live truthfully and when you live righteously, hindi ikaw yung exception, but ikaw yung rule. Hindi ikaw yung weird, hindi ikaw yung kakaiba, hindi ikaw yung freak, kundi yun yung norm. Dumadali sa iyo na maging mabuti kung marami kang kapwa mabuti. Kaya dapat nagtuturo tayo ng kabutihan at tama. Minsan, nanonood ako ng pelikulang uh, Rizal. Okay, the movie Rizal. And then, may mga flashback, may mga devices na naaalala mo yung mga eksena sa Noli Metangere. Tapos yung mga Filipino, sobrang inaapin ng mga pare, sobrang nilang pinahihirapan, hinuhut-hutan, kinakawawa. Tapos sunod-sunod pa rin. At naisip ko, nangyari yun, naging pwedeng api-apihin ng mga pare yung mga Pilipino, naging pwede nilang kawakawawain, Kasi, tinuruan nila eh. Nag-mission sila. Na-convert nila yung mga tao, na bihag nila ang utak. Kaya ngayon, kayang-kaya nilang ganunin. Kung babalik rin po natin yan, na kayo ay magko-convert ng mga tao to righteousness, magko-convert tayo to biblical Christianity, magko-convert tayo to real spirituality, what will happen? These people will also be very helpful to us. Kasi siyempre, yung tinuturuan mo, Pag pareho na kayo ng paniniwala, nagiging magkakampi kayo. At pag magkakampi na kayo, nagiging kaibigan mo pa siya. Pero pag hindi mo siya tinuruan at magkaiba kayo ng paniniwala, magkaaway kayo. Yung lakas niya, gagamitin niya laban sa'yo. Samantalang kung siya ay kapanalig mo na, yung lakas niya ay gagamitin niya para sa'yo at para sa inyong pananalig. Kaya napakahalaga na magturo po tayo ng katotohanan. Kasi yung mga taong hindi nabubuhay sa katotohanan ay kalaban ng katotohanan, therefore kalaban natin. Pero oras na sila ay nasa katotohanan na nagiging natin silang kakampi, hindi lang sa nababawasan na nagpapahirap sa atin, nadadagdagan pa yung katuwang natin. Kaya mahalagang magturo. Naranasan nyo na ba yan sa pamilya? Kung isang may nagpe-persecute sa inyong kamag-anak dahil laging Christian kayo, pagkatapos nung naging kapwa Christian nyo na, hindi na lang siya nagpe-persecute. Kasama nyo pa, katuwang nyo pa. Kaya mahalaga ang nagtuturo. Ang mga churches na magsusurvive, ang mga churches na dadami, lalago, titibay, yung mga churches na nagtuturo. It's a battle for hearts and minds. At hindi dapat tayo mag-blush, hindi tayo dapat mahiya, hindi tayo dapat mag-apologize for teaching because the other choice is Satan. The other teacher is Satan. Kaya dapat talaga masigasig tayo. By teaching what is right, we neutralize the enemies. Teaching neutralizes enemies. Teaching wins allies. Teaching creates a climate of correctness wherein the righteousness that we teach becomes the norm and teaching strengthens ourselves. Kumisan, nanghihina ka na sa pananampalataya, nanghihina ka na sa paggawa ng tama. Pero sinong nagpapalakas sa'yo, nagbibigay ng encouragement, nagsusupport sa'yo? Yung tao na naturuan mo lang noon, ngayon siya ang strong. Kaya naging weak ka, siya ang tumutulong sa'yo. Panapanahon lang naman yan eh. May panahon ako misan medyo weak ka, 
Pero yung tinuruan mo, naging strong siya, siya ngayon na magdadala at tutulong sa'yo. E kung wala kang naturuan, ikaw ay naging weak, edi wala na magsusuport sa'yo, lulog mo ka na talaga. Kaya tayo mga Christians, dapat para tayo mga mikrobyo. Nagpaparami, nagahawa ng kabutihan, ng tama, ng katuruan. Kaya ang tanong sa sarili, at gusto kong tanongin niyo ang sarili niyo ngayon mismo, marami na ba ako na ihawa? Gano karami ng tao ang nadala ko kay Kristo? Gano karami ng tao ang nabigyan ko ng pagkauhaw sa salita ng Diyos? na introducean ko ng Word of God, tas na adik na, nag-aaral na siya ngayon, kahit hindi ko ini-introduce, nag-aaral pa rin. At kahit nga ako tinatamad ngayon, siya pa yung namimilit sa akin. Ba, napaka-successful ng teaching na ginagawa natin pagka ganun. Kaya dapat mga kapatid, mission field yung talaga inyong familia. Every heart that has Christ is a missionary. Every heart that doesn't have Christ is a mission field. And remember this, spiritually speaking, every heart that doesn't have Christ is actually your enemy. So, what is the best way to beat an enemy? Not to kill the enemy, but to turn him into a friend. The best way to defeat the devil is not to kill those who follow him, but to take them to Christ, take them to righteousness. So instead of now being a soldier of darkness, this person becomes a soldier of righteousness. Nagiging times two yung resulta na babawasan ng isa yung kalaban, nadadagdagan ng isa itong kakampi. Kaya parang dalawa yung tao na nadagdag sa'yo. It is important to teach. Mga kapatid, lagi natin ituturo. Bakit ba tayo may mga notes-notes pa? Para tayo ay uh, nag-aaral ang salita ng Diyos para ba meron kayong ipampuna sa maraming upuan sa park? Para ba meron kayong upuan pagka marumi yung silya? Para meron kayong pamparikit ng apoy? Ano kaya yun? Because I want you to teach people. pag niyo sa bahay, all throughout the week, sa office, friends, ilalabas niyo inyo yung notes, o alam mo, natutunan ko nung Sunday, ganito, ganyan, ganyan. Teach. Because it is only by teaching that we can win the world. Kailangan maintindihan ng isip ng mga tao kung sino at kung ano si Kristo. Another way to avoid errors is to seek who is right and who is righteous. It is very important to surround yourself with the correct people. People who live by what is right. Kung kayo man po ay nakikisalamuha sa mga tao ang kamalian ng panuntunan nila sa buhay, kung tayo man ay nakikisama sa mga tao ang mali-mali ang patakaran sa buhay, make sure that it is done in a missionary perspective. That we are dealing with people who are in the wrong to take them to what is right. Not to join them in their errors. 1 Corinthians 15.33 Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Kaya nga yung mga magulang na naligaw ng landa sa mga anak, sino sinisisi? Di naman yung anak lagi. Laging yung kaibigan ng anak. Eh kasi kaibigan niya ganito. Kasi bad influence yung girlfriend. Kasi bad influence. Lagi. Totoo, merong bad influence. Kaya dapat hindi tayo nakikisama sa mga bad influence. Paano nyo ba nalalaman ang isang tao bad influence? Yung pagkasama nyo siya, Pag narinig nyo siya, pag pinakinggan nyo siya, biglang nalalayo kayo sa mabuti, nalalayo tayo sa kabutihan, nagigit tayo magagalitin, nagkakaroon tayo ng mga bisyo, nababawasan yung konsyensya natin sa pag-iwas sa mali. Hindi yun yung mga bad influence. Pinapabreak sa'yo ang mga rules, pinagsisinungaling ka, sinisira yung godliness in you, ginagawa kang selfish, proud. Yan ang mga bad influence. And sabi, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. And finally, what else can we do to avoid joining the long parade of mistaken people? Review, remember, refresh yourself on what is right. Laging nire-review yan. Minememorize, pinapaalalahanan ng sarili, nagpapaalala sa sarili. Nakikinig tayo sa Christian and very positive music. We expose ourselves to righteous messages. We choose our company. We do things with the right people so that we're always refreshed. We read the Word of God. Mine memoria, sinasa ulo lagi, ina-apply. Second Peter 1.13 I think it is right to refresh your memory. Meron naman siya ibang gustong ifa-refresh dito sa point na ito. Pero tama pa rin, to refresh our memory. Mistakes can be avoided by knowing what is right. 
by doing, by keeping to, and by promoting what is right. Brothers, sisters, avoid mistakes. Avoid sorrow. Avoid pain. What mistakes could you be committing consciously? Baka naman meron tayong mga ginagawa na alam na alam na nating mali, ginagawa pa natin. We are without excuse. Alam mong mali, ginagawa mo pa rin, walang excuse yan. What should we do? We should stop. If you're aware that you're doing something wrong, stop. Change your path. Change your direction. Immediately. And you will change your destiny. And definitely you will change your life. Life is not decades. Life is not years or months. Life is days, minutes, hours. Yung maliliit na mga bagay na ginagawa natin, yun ang nagkakadugtong-dugtong, yun ang nabubuo na mahabang buhay. Pero wala naman talaga nung haba. Yan ay mga dugtong-dugtong na mga maliliit na moments. So yung maliliit na moments natin ang mahalaga. Know what is right and never make a left or a right turn. Stick to what is right. Joshua 1, 7, 8. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Sa palagay niyo po ba, aksidente na pinag-uusapan natin itong bagay na ito? I don't think so. We always pray to the Lord, Lord, this is your church. These are your people. You are our God. So you be the speaker. Teach us what to discuss. Give us the verses so that your word may be applied to our lives. And then make your word important and relevant to each and every listener. You are here today. I am here today. God is here today because we have an appointment with the truth. And that appointment is telling us, avoid mistakes. Be conscious of your mistakes. If you are living in a lie, stop and live by the truth. If you are deceiving people, small or big ways, stop because God is truth and deception is of the devil. If you are destroying people, stop because God nurtures, Satan destroys. Yan po ang mensahe sa bawat isa sa atin. Remember when you have to decide, huwag na kayo maging sophisticated. Be simplistic. Just do what is right. Huwag na tayo nagtatalo-talo. Ano ba yung gagawin ko? Ano ba yung gagawin ko? Alin ang dapat? Just do what is right. Hindi naman nakakalito what is right and what is wrong. Just do what is right. 2 Corinthians 8.21 For we are taking pains to do what is right. Not only in the eyes of the Lord, but also, church, in the eyes of men. Sabi dito, kami nagsisikap, magpapakahirap na gawin ko anong tama. Hindi lang sa paningin ng Diyos, kundi sa paningin din ng tao. In other words, do not only be righteous, we must also look righteous. Hindi sapat na tama ang ginagawa mo, dapat mukha ring tama. Hindi sapat na wala kang maling ginagawa, dapat mukha ring wala. Kasi kahit tama po ang ginagawa natin, pero mukhang mali, may nagkakasala pa rin, may natitisod pa rin, meron pa rin nadidiscourage. Kasi sabi, hindi lang sa mata ng Diyos ang paggawa ng tama, sa mata rin ng tao. But of course, yung kabaligtara nun is, lalo naman dapat na hindi lang sa mata ng tao. Dapat sa mata rin ng Diyos. Pero pag binaligtad mo, sasabihin kasi ng iba, ang mahalaga sa akin, ang Diyos, ang nakakaalam ng puso ko, wala akong ginagawang mali. Oo nga, pero mukha meron eh. Kaya dapat, wala at mukhang wala. Para hindi matitisod ang ating kapwa at sila din ay encourage. Strive to do what is right. 1 John 3.10 This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. So pipili kayo ha? Panino kayong anak? Church, read. Anyone who does not do what is right 
is not a child of God. Nor is anyone who does not love his brother. Hmm, kanina kayong anak. Sabi ang anak ng Diyos, tama ang ginagawa. Hindi lang alam yung tama, ginagawa ang tama. Doon daw nagkakaalam. Kasi yung iba, sabi hindi, may religion naman ako, alakyan ng Bible ko. So, si church naman ako, nag-offering ako. Eh, ang tanong, ginagawa niya ba yung tama? Tinitigilan ba natin ang paggawa ng mali? I think that the message is very clear, brothers and sisters. Avoid mistakes. And you will definitely avoid sorrow. Our God is a God of righteousness. We should not thrive in mistakes. Especially kung alam na nating mali. Panginoong Diyos, kayong kumakausap sa amin. Kayo na relevant sa buhay namin araw-araw. Kayo na nagmamahal sa amin. May mensahe kayo para sa bawat isa sa amin. Ipakita mo sa amin ang aming katayuan, ang aming kalagayan. Kung ano man ang may mga natitira pa, maliliit mga mga mali na pamamaraan na alam namin ang mali, ituro mo sa amin, Panginoon. Hindi na kung anong mali tamat sa pagkatalam naman namin. Lord, strengthen us so that we may do what is right. At ang aming dalangin, Panginoon, yung inyo pong kabutihan, yung inyong katuwiran, maghari sa aming buhay. Kayo po ang siyang tunay na sinasamba namin. Kayo, Panginoong Yesus, ang Diyos ng aming buhay. Nais namin kayong sundin, nais namin mabuhay ng may katuwiran. Nais namin, Panginoon, maganap ang gusto mo sa aming buhay. Maghari po kayo. Pagliwanagin niyo ang katotohanan sa aming puso. Identify, Lord, and unmask all of these deceptions in our lives. And we pray, Lord, that your righteousness will prevail. That we will be able to avoid mistakes. Let's continue to be silent before the Lord. Continue to bask in the presence of the Spirit. Let the Spirit minister to each one of us silently.